Hello and welcome to Logos College Online Learning. Uh, this is General, General English 2. Uh, today we're going to uh, start Unit 11. Unit 11. So if you want to go into your book, open your book to Unit 11 on page 86. Page 86. And this unit, it, um, we, we kind of talked about birth, marriage, and death, some vocabulary last week. Um, this week, I want to talk about a, a, verb, a verb tense that, that is often used when you describe situations in life, such as birth, marriage, and death. So I'm going to talk about the present perfect continuous. And the present perfect continuous, um, it talks about an event, something that starts in the past and still continues today and is still happening today. Um, remember the past perfect that was something that started in the past before another past event. So that, those events are started in the past and finish in the past. But the present perfect continuous starts in the past, but is still happening today. It's still going on today. On page 86, talks about a music teacher named uh, Gareth Malone. And he, his story, um, he was born in England in 1975. Okay. And look at ex or exercise number four down at the bottom of page 86. Here's some questions about Gareth's life. Life. If you look at the chart on page 87, you can use those, that, the information in that chart to answer the questions about his life in question four. Question number one. Let's look at these together. All right? When did he start playing the piano? And your answer is right here, when he was three. Question number two. How long has he been playing the piano? And your answer is right here, since he was three. So these two questions, they have different meanings. Notice one is in blue color and the other one's in red color. All the events in blue are past tense because these started in the past and they are finished. The red is present perfect continuous because these started in the past but he is still doing it now so when did he start playing the piano this is past tense when he was three okay so when you start doing something you start and and that's it you you don't keep starting 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 over and over again so this is why that's in the past tense how long has he been playing the piano since he was three? So here, he started when he was three, and he is still doing it. He is still playing the piano today. So this is why this is in present perfect continuous. Number three, when did he start teaching singing? When he was 23. How long has he been teaching singing? since he was 23. Right? Again, the same thing. You start to teach. You start in the past and it's just, it's done because you don't start to teach and start to teach and start to teach over and over and over again. No. And here, how long has he been teaching? This is in present perfect c continuous because he started when he was 23 in the past 
and he is still teaching today. And same thing for number five. When did he make his first TV program? Uh, in 2007. How long has he been making TV programs? Since 2007, right? He is still making them now. How many programs has he made? Three. How long has he been living in London? For about 30 years. Because <clears throat> he... He was born in England, and then he moved to London when he was 10. And then so it's been about 30 years. And he's still living there now. All right. so let's take a closer look at the present perfect continuous. Look at the grammar right here. It says he made his first TV program in 2007, and he still makes them. In this sentence right here, he made, this is past tense because he did it in 2007. It's no longer 2007. It's done. He still makes them. This is present tense. It's what he usually does every day. He has been making programs since 2007. He started in 2007 and he's still making them today. He's made three so far. He started making one in the past, and then he finished it in the past. He started his second one in the past. He finished his second one in the past. He started his third one in the past, and he finished it in the past also. So the present perfect continuous expresses an activity that began in the past and still continues today. And how do you make that? You use has or have plus been, plus the present participle of the verb, which all you do is add an ing to the verb. So I, you, we, and they, we say I have, you have, we have, they have, been, plus the present participle, we add an ing to the verb. In this case, the verb is work. So we say working. I have been working. We have been working. If you want to say no, we say have not or haven't. He, she, it has or has not, hasn't been working. Remember when you ask a question, we flip the subject and the verb. How long have I been working? How long has she been working? I want you to come down here on page, or this, this box, it says, remember, state verbs such as be, have, know, love, are rarely used in continuous tenses. All right. So state verbs, I don't know if you learned them yet. Uh, state, state verbs, they are usually verbs that, that are, there's no action. You're not really doing something, moving. There's no movement. You're not moving around. You're not, you're not uh, talking. You're not jumping. You're not running. Right? And so these verbs, you don't usually use them in the, in the present con or any continuous tense. Um. For example, I have known him for a long time. So this is in present perfect. All right. you, you, you knew him, you first met him in the past, and it's still true today. You know, I have known him for a long time. We don't say, I have been knowing him for a long time. Because we don't use, we usually don't use no. We don't use state verbs in continuous tenses, in ing form. We do sometimes, not sometimes, it's rare, 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 rare. All right. All right, let's go to page 145 in your book, page 145, and this gives you more detail about the uses of present perfect continuous. So you, you talk about an activity that began in the past and continues to the present. He's been teaching music for years. 
He started teaching in the past, and he is still today, still teaching music now. It's been raining for days, so it started raining in the past, and it's still raining now. Um, I want you to come to these uh, two boxes right here. These are two times where we don't use, we, we rarely use present perfect continuous, these two times. Right? Some verbs don't have the idea of a long time, such as find, start, buy, die, lose, break, stop. It is unusual to find these in the present perfect continuous. What this means is that these verbs, when you do, when these actions, these are actions that are usually really quick. It happens really quickly, and then it's over. Like when you find something, let's say you find money. You don't find money over and over and over again. It doesn't take a long time. Like when you, when you buy something. When you buy something, you give somebody money, they give you the product, and then you're done. All right, so this is what it means by it doesn't take a long time, like when you die <laughs> or when you uh, stop. All right, it doesn't take a long time to stop. It's usually, it's usually very quick. So that's why these verbs are usually not in present perfect continuous because it doesn't continue to happen. Like, my cat has died. It's, so it usually is, it happens and it's done, it's quick. If you say, my cat has been dying, that means he's been dying for a long time. And that's pretty sad. So let's, so <laughs> I've bought a new dress. You gave somebody money, they cash your money, they give you the dress, and then you walk out the store. It's finished. If you say, I have been buying a new dress, that means you started in the past and, in, and, it, and you're still doing it. You're still buying the dress. So th that doesn't make sense. So that's why these verbs are usually not in the present perfect continuous. And number three, verbs that express state. So again, state verbs like like, love, know, have. We don't, we don't use these in present perfect continuous. Right? So these are verbs that usually are, not, um, are verbs with no action. There's no moving. There's no movement. Okay. So this is a quick review of present perfect continuous tense. Again, the subject plus have or has plus been plus the, <clears throat> the verb and ing, all right, the present participle. If you want to say no, you put not in between have, has, and been. And then, of course, a question, you switch the subject and have and has. And you want to talk about long actions that started in the past and continue until now. Example, I have been living in Ireland for almost four years. Okay. So it started four years ago, and you are still living in Ireland today. Express recent actions that have clear evidence or results now. Her eyes are red because she's been crying all evening. Why her eyes red? So she started crying in the evening, early in the evening, and it's still, she's still doing it now. For temporary situations, all right, so temporary doesn't mean for a long time. So let's say, like, um, you're learning English. It says, have they been learning English this week? So if you just started learning English, or, or a week is not a long time, right? And when you talk about situations that are temporary, short times, we usually use present perfect continuous. This, this tense, sometimes people get confused between present perfect continuous and present perfect. It's because they're very, very similar. But there's a, a little bit of difference. And I'll, let me show you. So if you remember, the present perfect is have or has plus the past participle. Right. 
And then the present perfect continuous is have or has plus been and the present participle. So the present perfect is something that started in the past and is still true up to now. Where present perfect continuous started in the past and is still going on now. So it's still happening now. Let's look at the difference. Present perfect. The kids have played for two hours. So they, they played, but they're done. But what, why is this in present perfect? Because it is still true. It's fact. And the day is not over. It's still today. Here it says the kids have been playing since morning. So they started today, this morning, and they are still doing it now. They are still playing. Present perfect is usually used for permanent actions. I have taught English for 12 years. This is in present perfect. I started teaching English 12 years ago. I still do it now, but I'm not currently teaching. I'm still a teacher. I'm just not teaching right now. I have been teaching this class for one hour. So I started teaching an hour ago, and I'm still doing it right now. He has repaired the car. That means he fixed the car, and the car is still fixed. He has been repairing the car for two hours. He started two hours ago, and he's still working on it. He's not finished yet. He's still doing it. So that's, that's the difference between present perfect and present perfect continuous. This is confusing because there are many verbs and many situations where you can use both present perfect and present perfect continuous for the same meaning. Right? I'll explain to you that some more. Okay, let's look at this chart. Eating breakfast. Eating breakfast. So eating breakfast is the t uh, what we're we talking about. Eat breakfast. All right. Here's a timeline. Here's present, today, past. Let's say uh, this morning. This morning and right now. What time is it right now? We're at almost noon, 12 o'clock. And then this is in the evening. So let's say past tense, eat breakfast. I ate breakfast at seven o'clock this morning. It's right here. You started at that and then you're finished. It's, you finished, you started, and you're finished in the past. Look at present perfect. I have eaten breakfast today. You started 7 a.m. this morning, and now it's 12 o'clock. So it's still true. You, you've already, you ate breakfast. I have eaten breakfast. And we use present perfect because today is not finished yet. It's still today. Present continuous. It's right here. Let's say this is right now. Right now. I am eating breakfast at the moment. Right now. Currently eating now. Now. Right. So now you're still happening, taking place. We use present continuous when you say at the moment. Present perfect continuous. I have been eating breakfast all morning, or you could say since the morning. Present perfect continuous, you started eating breakfast at 7, and you're still eating. You're still eating now. So that's, hopefully that helps you explain or uh, understand a little bit more about the tenses, these, these four tenses. They could be a little confusing, especially present perfect and present perfect continuous. Another situation, let's say you started waiting for the bus at 4 p.m. and now it's 7 p.m. You say, I have been waiting for hours. Present perfect continuous because you started at 4 and now it's 7 and you are still waiting for the bus. Okay, let's go down to your practice on page 87, exercise 1 on page 87. And exercise 1, they want you to choose the correct
tens. Right. Look at number one. How long have you been waiting here? So this is in present. I'm sorry. Yeah, present perfect continuous because you started waiting and then you're still waiting. Right. So all, everything in red is in present perfect continuous, but every in blue. This is past tense. I bought a computer a few weeks ago. Because a few weeks ago, it's already finished. You bought the computer. You're still not trying to buy the computer. You gave the money. All right, they gave you the computer. It's done. This is why it's in past tense. Alice has been looking for a new job for ages. She started in the past, and she's still looking. For ages means a long time. This expression means a long time. How long have you had your car? All right. Actually, oop, sorry. This should be, this is should be in the in the um, the green color. I'm sorry. This is past perfect because the verb the verb have or had. The verb have is a state verb. And these verbs are usually not in the present perfect continuous. Uh, Sue has been talking on her phone for ages. Again, it's a long time. So we use present perfect continuous. She's, she has spoken to at least six friends today. Um, she started, she talked to at least six friends today. Present perfect. Um, exercise two, they want you to come up with the, uh, the question, like if someone says to you, my sis sister's working in New York, what else can you ask them? You would ask them, how long has she been working there? Number two, I'm training to run a marathon. How long have you been training? Look at number three, my boss is on holiday. How long has he been away? Notice this is in red, and I write state of. It's the same thing as number five and six. Number two has the verb to be. Number five has the verb know. And number six has the verb have. These are state verbs. State of verbs. And remember, state of verbs like know, have, and be, we don't, we don't usually put them in the present, we don't use them in the present perfect continuous. So this is why this is in present perfect. Number five is in present perfect. Number six is in present perfect. But number one, two, and four are in present perfect continuous. And you can tell, of course, because there's a verb in the ing. Exercise three. They want you to put this in present perfect simple, continuous, or past simple. I, I answer them for you. I'll, I'll explain to you why. All right. How long have you been coming to this school? So have plus been plus verb and ing. This is in present perfect continuous. Why? Because you started coming to this school in the past, and you are still coming to this school. Number two, how long have you been using this book? Again, this is in present perfect continuous, because you started using this book in the past, and you are still using it now. Which book did you use before this one? All right, you notice this is in past tense. This is past simple. Why? Because you're, you're using a new one, right? They want to know which one did you use before the one you are using now. This means that you started using a book, an old, older book, and then you stopped using that book. Now you're using the newer book, another book. So you started in the past and finished in the past. This is why it's past tense. How long have you known your teacher? So you met your teacher, got to know your teacher in the past, and you still know your teacher. But know is a state of verb. 
So state of verbs, we usually don't use present perfect continuous. So this is why this is in present perfect simple. How long have you known your teacher? Uh, number four, exercise four and five. Um, I'll, I can let you read that in your own time. I answered for you. Um, number one, why are the students bored? Because the teacher's been talking for hours. Right? Number two, why does he have a sore throat? Because he has been singing for a long time. And this just go all these, exercise four is, all of this is in present perfect continuous. Number five, they want you to put in present perfect simple. And here I answer it for you. This is all present perfect. Okay. All right. Um, I want to move on to, you, uh, to page uh, 92. Okay. Last week we talked about this vocabulary, birth, all right, marriage, engagement, marriage, and then... Death. Okay. So some of this stuff is good news and, and some is bad news. Right? So good news is, are things you want to hear and bad news are things you don't want to hear but, but throughout your lifetime you'll, there, there will be some bad news and there will be hopefully a lot, a lot of good news. Right? And let's, they want you to put these words, some vocabulary words, in to come to fill in the blanks and I answered them all for you and um, these are some phrases some some expressions that you would use in each situation look at situation one there's a baby so it looks like there was birth someone gave birth right. says my wife had a baby last night it's a conversation between a and B I'm sorry and then B says congratulations was it a boy or a girl Okay, boy, William James, how much did he weigh? 4.1 kilos. Ooh, a big boy. How are mother and baby doing? They're fine. That's wonderful. Give her my love when you see her. So you say congratulations when, when something, is usually during good news, and you want to show that you're happy for somebody. Okay, look at number two. So, someone got engaged, they got a ring, now they're going to get married, so that's, that's, that's good news. And A and B are talking, it says, Alfie and I have got engaged. That's fantastic news. Congratulations. Do you like my ring? Wow, diamonds, it's beautiful. When's the wedding? So remember, people get engaged before they get married. And she gets engaged, and then their wedding, it's worth thinking of getting married next spring. Okay. I hope I'm invited. Of course you are. I want you to be a bridesmaid. A bridesmaid is, um, so when the man and the woman get married, the man's best friends are usually the groomsmen, and then the women's uh, best friends are usually the bridesmaid. Okay. Okay, number three and four is, is some news that's not so good, all right? Some bad news. Uh, so this looks like a divorce. <laughs> the picture is ripped up, and A is talking to B. Have you heard about Bill and Jane and Josie? No, what has happened? Okay, so this is in past, I'm sorry, this is in present perfect. And it's something happened, it started in the past, and it's still true today. What happened? Well, they've been having a tough time recently. So this means that they've been arguing, they've been fighting. I know they haven't been getting on well at all. Getting on well, sometimes you also say getting along. They haven't been getting along. Then it says, we've, they finally decided to split up. Right, so to split up, it means like to break up. To break up, to split up. 
It says, I'm so sorry to hear that. What a shame. Pity. So what a shame. Kind of like saying, what a pity. You're sad. You're, 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 you're sad for them. Number four. All right, so this is uh, someone died, and it says, we lost grandpa last week. So instead of saying, my grandfather died, you could say, I lost my grandfather. I lost my grandpa. Say, oh, I'm so sorry. He was a lovely man. Everyone was really fond of him. Fond means to like, to love. So everyone really liked him. Everyone really loved him. He and grandma were together nearly 60 years. Together, it could mean to be married, right? or it could be mean to be partners, a couple. That's incredible. How old was he? Incredible is like fantastic, wonderful. 88. And how's your grandma coping? This is kind of like asking, how's your grandma doing? How is your grandma uh, hand handling the bad news to cope? Right? Maybe she's crying, she's sad, but she's doing okay. She's okay, she's got her family around her. Well, I'm sure you all have wonderful memories of him. All right. So these are some vocabulary words and phrases that you can use um, when you hear good news and, and when you hear bad news. All right, um, I want to finish off with you on some information that's very useful to you um, in, your, in your life as you continue. Uh, maybe you go back to school, some more school, but um, here's some everyday language that you can use. Um, this is on page 116 in your book. And it says, filling in forms. All right, so what are forms? What is a form? When do you fill in forms? You fill in a form when you register for school or when you want to open a bank account or, um, in my, or when you want to um, apply for a visa. So these are situations when, when you fill out a form. And all these, number uh, 1 through 10, this is information that, that you need to give, that you need to write onto the form. Such information as your first name, your surname, or sometimes they say your last name. Date of birth, place, your address, where do you live? Your marital status, occupation, your job, your, your work, your career. Right. And I answered him for you. So number one, the question that you would ask is, what's your first name? All right, what is your name? What is your first name? Number two, surname. You might not know what surname is, but it's your family name, your last name. Sometimes you, people hear, you hear people say last name. It means your family name. That's your surname. Your date of birth, of course, where were you born? I'm sorry, when, when were you born? When were you born? Your place of birth, where were you born? Your permanent address, where do you live? All right. Where do you live? Marital status, are you married or are you single? Occupation, the question people ask about occupation is what do you do? What do you do? Your qualifications, what degrees, diplomas, certificates do you have? That's qualifications. Hobbies, interests, activities, what do you do in your free time? And of course, telephone number, what are your home and mobile phone numbers? Okay. Nowadays, no one, no one ever has a home phone anymore. Mostly people just have a mobile or cell phone. So this is information when you fill out forms. Um, this is useful for you to know. Uh, another, other useful things, um, your country code. If they ask for your country code, your phone number, Lao is, is uh, 856. I don't know if you knew that. Um, and then your signature is, is, this is mine. It's terrible. I'm sorry. Okay, um, so that's going to be it for this lesson. Uh, let me check out here.
So this was this is your last lesson before your your final exam. Right. Uh, next week we have your final exam review, and then your uh, final exam schedule is going to be released to you the week after that, right. or your final exam schedule will be released to you next week also, and then you have final exams June 14, 15, and 16. Okay. Um, the exact day for general English 2, I'm not sure yet. Okay, um, your homework will be released to you later today and also this video. So um, if you have any questions, please uh, send me a WhatsApp or send me a message through email or Google Classroom. All right, All right thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.